The Biden-Harris administration has put the two centuries old Monroe Doctrine on life support, an ominous event for our security. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. In 1823, in his annual address to Congress, President James Monroe enunciated a bedrock principle of American foreign policy. It warned other powers not to interfere in the affairs of the Western Hemisphere, that a political or military intervention would be viewed as a potential hostile act against the United States. The Monroe Doctrine was prompted by concerns that certain European powers, primarily France, Russia, and Spain, were attempting to colonize or recolonize parts of the Americas. Spain made attempts to retake newly independent Mexico. Washington said, forget about it. Russia also ultimately gave up its ambitions in this part of the world when it sold Alaska to the U.S. During our Civil War, France sent troops to Mexico to install a puppet regime. When the war ended, France got the message, get out of Mexico or else. It withdrew. In 1962, we nearly had a nuclear war with the Soviet Union when Moscow attempted to install nuclear missiles in Cuba. The Kremlin backed down. Today, however, the Monroe Doctrine is becoming a dead letter to our peril. China, Russia, and even Iran are on the march, making ever more brazen moves in the Americas. China has been relentless, buying up companies and mines to control the region's abundant resources, while simultaneously controlling or operating ports. Its companies make it a point to establish close ties with Latin governments, getting diplomatic influence. Brazil, for instance, has just blatantly blocked X, formerly Twitter. China has already made itself the biggest trading partner for most South American nations. Beijing's biggest project is a massive port it is constructing in Peru. Its goal here is making it the region's chief global gateway to global markets, especially in Asia, as well as receiving Chinese products like EVs for sale in the area. The port, of course, could easily become a Chinese naval base. The other ports China controls will facilitate a growing Chinese naval presence in this part of the world. U.S. Senator James Risch, the ranking Republican on the Foreign Relations Committee, recently pointed out other Chinese activities. Quote, China buys land in Latin America, builds sensitive military sites, and then declares the land off limits to the government where it is located. It has installed telecommunications networks that expose our neighbors to data and cybersecurity risks, and a network of military-controlled cyber and space facilities in Argentina, Bolivia, and elsewhere. Chinese military intelligence facilities in Cuba sit less than 100 miles from U.S. shores, end quote. Russia has sent troops and military equipment to Nicaragua, as well as missile systems to Venezuela. Russian propaganda and disinformation activities are widespread. Iranian agents actively work to help authoritarian regimes. In the face of all of this, the Biden-Harris administration largely sucks its thumb. With Russian, Chinese, and Iranian support, not to mention the Cuban agents running Venezuela's security services, dictator Nicolas Maduro blatantly steals an election, and the U.S. reaction has been pitifully weak. By turning its back on the Monroe Doctrine, the U.S. tells the world it can no longer be trusted to lead the free world as it has done since World War II. Not good for our security in the future. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Okay.